Hi, and welcome to Teen Kids News. I'm Reed. We've got lots to tell you about this week, so let's get right to it. Here's our top story. Throughout this season of Teen Kids News, we've been reporting on the need to raise awareness about human rights, especially the rights of children. As Alexandra tells us, it's a struggle that's run into opposition from an unlikely source. Wanting to ensure the safety and health of children around the world, the United Nations created an international treaty, or in UN speak, a convention. The full title is the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, or more simply, the CRC. Joining us again is child rights advocate, Dr. Yvonne Vissing. She's the author of Children's Human Rights in the USA, Challenges and Opportunities. Welcome back. Hey, thanks for letting me come back and share more information about the important CRC. And the CRC is certainly important. Back in 1989, the UN drew up what is basically an agreement to protect the rights of children. First of all, how do they define children? A child is defined as anyone under age 18. Okay, there are more than 50 rights listed in the CRC, and we discussed some of them the last time we spoke. But let's briefly review the four basic principles. The first is non-discrimination. What kinds of discrimination do kids face? Young people face discrimination on a regular basis. It could be on their gender or their race or their religion. Children have the highest rates of poverty, uh, hunger, and homelessness. So there's a lot of discrimination that occurs. The second principle is the right to life, survival, and development. What does this cover? It means that you should be free from abuse or attacks. Uh, and in terms of development, it means that you have the right to use your gifts and talents that you're born with and that adults should help you to develop them. Next is doing what's in the child's best interest. Can you give us some examples? Uh, for instance, people don't think about Wi-Fi as uh, being in the child's best interest. But if you don't have Wi-Fi, you can't do your homework. Uh, they don't think about transportation or sidewalks. Those are child interests too. I never thought of sidewalks as being a kid's best interest, but that certainly makes sense. And that brings us to the fourth principle, meaningfully engaging and respecting children's views. I guess the key word there is meaningfully, right? It is, and we know that young people are smart. You're creative. You have ideas that need to be shared. You have new ways of looking at it. And so we would like to be able to hear them and have adults listen and respect them. Clearly, the CRC is an important agreement, and it's been ratified by every member country of the United Nations, except one. Surprisingly, that one's the United States? That's correct. The United States was instrumental in the creation of the CRC, and it was built largely off of the Bill of Rights. And then it was signed by President Clinton, but it was never ratified by Congress. A treaty has to be ratified and signed both. We've done one step, but we haven't done the second. How big a problem is it that we haven't ratified it yet? It is a huge problem for children in the United States that when you compare the education, health, happiness, satisfaction, and safety of children in other countries that have ratified the CRC, they are doing much better than the children here. So it is a big problem. Is there a push to get the U.S. to ratify the CRC? Yes. Uh, over the past 35 years, there have been hundreds and hundreds of letters to Congress and representatives to ask them to ratify the CRC. Can teens help? Yes, absolutely. Teens can help. You can help by learning more about the CRC yourself. You can help by having other people learn about it. You can help by having your school become a rights respecting school. You can do so many things to help your community, your school, and your family to be more rights respecting. Got it. Thanks for speaking with us, Dr. Bissing. Thank you for the opportunity. So, if you're looking for a cause to work on, rallying support for the CRC is a good start. And it can be as simple as organizing a writing campaign. Get friends, family, and people in your community to tell our congressional leaders that the U.S. must ratify the Children's Rights Convention. As they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. For Teen Kids News, I'm Alexandra. 
We've got lots more coming up on Teen Kids News, so stick around. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on Teen Kids News. We'll be right back. Hopefully, this next report will show you that it's okay to fail. The trick is to not give up. Imagine helping to start a company that is so successful it becomes a household name, and then getting fired from the very company you created. That's exactly what happened to Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple. As the story goes, the tech company began in this garage in 1976. Less than 10 years later, Jobs was kicked out. The reasons had to do with disappointing sales for some Apple products, but it also had to do with friction between Jobs and Apple's board of directors. The specific reasons why Jobs was axed aren't important to this story. What is important is how Jobs took the humiliating ouster. He could have taken the easy way out and retired, but instead, he started another computer company and he started the animation studio Pixar. It took almost 11 years, but eventually, the executives at Apple realized they made a mistake and asked Jobs to come back. And come back he did. He was the force behind the incredibly popular iPhone and iPad. Because Jobs didn't throw in the towel, even after the rug was pulled out from under him, he went on to run what many call the world's most successful company. As Steve Jobs said, getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. His advice to the rest of us, sometimes life is going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith, definitely words to live by. With If At First You Don't Succeed, I'm Emily for Teen Kids News. Here are some numbers that are literally out of this world. The galaxy we call home is the Milky Way. And according to NASA, it contains as many as 400 billion stars. But the Milky Way is only one galaxy in the universe. Scientists say that with our most powerful telescopes, we can see about two trillion galaxies. How many stars do those galaxies contain? The best guess so far is 10 to the 24th power. If that's a hard number to wrap your head around, look at it this way. That's more stars than there are grains of sand on every beach on our planet. By the way, if you're wondering why our galaxy is called the Milky Way, the name comes from the ancient Greeks. To them, all those stars looks like milk splashed across the night sky. The Chinese use a different name. They call it the Silver River. I call it pretty spectacular. For Teen Kids News, I'm Ava. We have to take a quick break, but don't go away because Teen Kids News will be right back. We can all use some tips on how to do our best in school. So check out our Make the Grade report. When you hand in a paper, you might not get the grade you want if you miss an important step, because the difference between an A and a C can be a P. P for proofreading. Yes, I know that computers have little red lines that alert us to misspellings, but you can't rely on that. Let's say you typed, I read a book a week. Unless you're using papyrus, which is actually a read, you misspelled read, but your computer probably won't catch that. However, your teacher will. As for autocorrecting, sometimes it's helpful, but sometimes it's not. First of all, when the computer autocorrects a misspelled word, it often ends up substituting a wrong word. Sometimes you weren't even at fault. Before you finish typing the word, the autocorrect guessed at what you intended to write and finished it for you. Unfortunately, the computer got it wrong. Sure, you can deal with that problem by disabling your autocorrect, but the best way to make sure what you wrote is correct is to carefully proofread. 
Here are some tips. Print what you wrote. Most of us find it easier to proof on paper than on the computer screen. Read very slowly. Look at one word at a time. And if possible, read out loud. I know that sounds like a lot of effort, but experts say our brains actually make it hard for us to catch our mistakes. We tend to see what we think we wrote instead of what's really on the page. The best proof that proofreading works is to give it a try. I'm Kristen, here to help you make the grade. I'm about to introduce you to what is probably the most extraordinary creature on the planet. It's this tiny jellyfish called Turritopsis dorni. It's not much bigger than a pencil eraser. What makes this little guy so incredibly impressive is that it has the uncanny ability to reprogram its cells, meaning that once it grows old, it can rewind its internal clock and become young again. That's why it's called the immortal jellyfish. Rather than dying of old age, it can keep reversing its cells and start over again, apparently forever. Maybe one day, scientists will figure out how these amazing jellies do it and unlock the true secret of immortality. Personally, living forever isn't something I'm dying to do, but who knows? For Teen Kids News, I'm Mason. There are some things in life that we know so well we could, as the saying goes, do them in our sleep. But driving is not one of them. Drowsy driving is a major cause of car crashes, especially for teens. That's why the National Road Safety Foundation has this message. Girl, you're a hot mess. Don't dare tell me that you think you're going to get behind my steering wheel. It's no big deal. I've driven you lots of times. Yeah, when you were awake. I am awake. Really? You're still in your pajamas. Oh yeah, you're right. <sighs> and you're yawning. I'll be fine. This will wake me up. Quit fooling yourself. Whether you're tired or jittery, it's not safe for either of us. You're so tired that you're arguing with an inanimate object, and it's winning. OK, OK, fine. I guess I am a little tired. A little? Sweetie, ask someone for a ride. It's just not worth the risk. Don't miss the other cool videos created by the NRSF. It's easy to see more. Simply like, follow, and subscribe to the National Road Safety Foundation. Hi, I'm Piper Connolly, coming up next here on Teen Kids News. Let's meet a teen who has the talent and drive to make it in the very tough world of entertainment. Here's this week's rising star. This week's rising star has been compared to pop punk pioneer Avril Lavigne, along with the grunge overtones of the band Paramore. Her name is Piper Connolly. The pain it reminds me what we had was real. I'll never let go of the way I feel. No. He's part of my psyche. So I need a deal. If we can be close, I don't need to real. No. When he said I'm leaving, he cut me up in pieces. He broke me. So nothing was left Underneath the bleachers Tears fell on his t-shirt He looked me in the eyes and said I'm pretty when I'm crying So have a good night
Wow, that's some voice. And you're only 13? Yes, I am. Thank you very, very much. Like many of the songs you write, Muse came from personal experience, didn't it? Yes, it did. Uh, I. It was based off like the kind of like relatable experience of liking someone and they don't reciprocate those feelings for you. But it's even more complicated than that, right? Because this was someone you collaborate with on your music? Yeah, it was really difficult because we made such an awesome team together. So I really had to face like this choice of like letting my feelings get in the way of our collaboration or picking like my music over it, um, which I ended up going with that. But it was definitely a hard decision to face. Did this person know you had a crush on them? I had told them like a year previously and then we stopped hanging out like a ton. And then like a little bit later, I realized I still liked them, but we were just we worked together so awesome. So, well, it's lucky for us that you got through that. Now, you've described your music with three words. Fun, authentic, and relatable. How do you achieve that? I think that I'm just now going through like those teen years. So I'm just now going through things that everyone goes through. So I just kind of write about those experiences. You're growing up in Arizona, actually pretty close to the desert. What's it like? Hot. Um, We pretty much are the desert. So it's like 110 degrees out right now. It's literally a sauna. Wow. So when you're not songwriting or performing, what kind of things do you like to do? I love just hanging out with my friends and watching movies, and I love filmmaking. That's like my biggest passion other than music. That's pretty cool. As I said earlier, your musical style has been compared to pop punk band Paramore, but does that go for your hairstyle as well? As you know, the band's lead singer, Haley Williams, famously sported red hot hair. Yeah, I mean, I didn't go into like dyeing my hair red, being like, oh my God, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be like Haley Williams. Um, But afterwards, I was like, wow, I guess I am kind of like her. But I think I'll go through the entire rainbow at some point. So we'll see where I go next with it. Well, it looks great. Thanks so much for talking with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. Even at 13, Piper's already had years of experience. She's been performing live in front of hundreds of people since she was five years old. Here's a bit more of her song, Muse. For Teen Kids News, I'm Sydney. Are you enjoying Teen Kids News? If so, tell us about it. Post a comment on our socials and you may see it included in an upcoming show. We just need your first name and your town or city. If you want to add a photo, great. Don't go away. There is still more Teen Kids News ahead. Every year, as many as 400 people are struck by lightning in the U.S. Fortunately, almost 90% of them survive, which is incredible when you realize that a bolt of lightning is hotter than the surface of the sun, five times hotter. On a continent torn by war through much of its history, one conflict was the longest. It was fought between England and France. At issue was the French throne. The English believed they were the rightful heirs to the throne of France. Not surprisingly, the French didn't agree. So on and off over the decades, they fought numerous battles. One of the most famous was the Siege of Orleans. The English were winning until a 17-year-old stepped forward to lead the French army. Not just 17, but also a peasant. And not just a peasant, but also a girl. She said the voices of saints told her to become a soldier. So she cut her hair short, put on men's armor, and led the French to victory after victory. Until she was captured by the enraged English and executed. She was called Joan of Arc. For freeing her country from the English, she is honored as the patron saint of France. The fighting went on for more years, until the French finally expelled the English. The conflict was known as the Hundred Years' War. Except it wasn't exactly a hundred years. It was actually 116 years. 
Maybe historians wanted to make it easier for us students. The Hundred Years' War is a lot easier to remember than the 116 Years' War. For Teen Kids News, I'm Katarina. Well, that's our show for this week. Tune in here for more Teen Kids News next week. Or catch us anytime on our socials. See you then.